Welcome. Today we're going to discover how to backup and restore databases using Snap Center with the SQL Server plugin. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the Snap Center architecture. This is a typical topology of a Snap Center deployment. The SQL Server plugin can be deployed through a Snap Center server. Snap Center will then manage backup, restore, and cloning of SQL Server databases. Before the demo, let's try to understand some terminology that Snap Center uses. Let's take a quick look at the organization of Snap Center to discuss some of the constructs we'll be working with. These items are the fundamentals of all your data protection and clone jobs. You interact with datasets, policies, and resources in every backup and clone operation you perform. First, hosts. You add SQL Server hosts into Snap Center in order to protect the databases on these hosts. For example, if you add SQL Server to Snap Center, then as part of the add host process, Snap Center will push plugins out to the SQL Server and install them. Snap Center will then perform a discovery operation to get a list of all the SQL instances, databases, and availability groups the host is a part of. Resources are items you want to protect or clone. For a SQL Server plugin, your resources will be databases, instances, or availability groups. Resource groups are a way to organize the resources you want to protect. You can group a number of SQL Server databases, even across multiple hosts, into a resource group to back these up together. Resource groups are optional for most plugins. However, for VMware virtual machines or data stores, a resource group is required. Policies are the set of rules governing how you perform your backup, clone, and verification jobs. Policy components include schedule, retention, and replication settings, as well as prescript and postscript arguments and other settings. Policies are assigned to resources or resource groups. Now let's see how we would backup and restore a SQL Server database with Snap Center. Here's the workflow you'll see in the following demo. In this demonstration, SQL Server plugin for Snap Center has already been installed and configured. If you need to understand how to do that, please refer to the Setup Snap Center for SQL Server plugin video. Before we backup our database, we'll get the size of the database using the transact SQL command. You can see that we have a 1.5 terabyte database. We'll now log into Snap Center. Now we'll create a full database backup using Snap Center by selecting resources. Select Seattle Retail Database. Select Next at the bottom of the screen. You can see that there is no policy defined. We will add one now by selecting the plus sign. Provide policy name and description, then select Next. Select the full backup option. This screen allows you to schedule the frequency of the backup. However, in this demonstration, we will skip the schedule. Select Next. You can then provide retention settings of your backup. In this demonstration, we will leave it as default. Select Next. In case your volume has been snap mirrored or snap vaulted, snap mirror can update either of these settings. In this demonstration, we do not have either of these set up for the volume, and we will select Next. You have the ability to provide pre or post scripts that assign to the policy. In this demonstration, we don't have any scripts, and we will select Next. Snap Center can verify your backup using database consistency checks. We will select Next to see the summary of the policy we've just created. Now, the daily full backup policy has been created and is available for us to assign to Seattle Retail. Select Next at the bottom of the screen to assign a verification server. In this demonstration, we will not assign a verification server, so we will select Next. Snap Center can send a notification regarding the database protection of the resource. In this demonstration, we will skip by selecting Next to see the summary of our database protection. In the Seattle Retail Topology, you can see that there is no backup created. We will now create a backup by selecting the Backup Now icon. Backup has been started. You can monitor the backup by selecting the Monitor icon and then selecting the job detail by double-clicking the job. backup is now completed. We will now edit the database by deleting the FM table using a SQL Server Management Studio. We will now attempt to restore the SQL Server using Snap Center.
We will restore the database by selecting the resource. Select Seattle Retail Database. Select the backup and then select the restore icon. Select restore the database to the same host option, then select next. Since we did not have a transaction log backup, we will skip by selecting next. In this demonstration, we will not create a transaction log backup before restoring. We will select overwrite the database with the same name during restore, then select next. We will skip post ops by selecting next. We will skip notification by selecting next to see the summary of the operation. We can monitor the restore process using the monitor icon. Restore is now completed. Now let's see how long it takes to backup and restore our 1.5 terabyte database. As you can see here, it only took one minute to backup and a little over a minute to restore our 1.5 terabyte database. Let's check the database and see that our FM table is back. As you can see, the FM table has been restored. As demonstrated here, backup and restoring SQL Server with Snap Center is fast and easy with the web interface. Thank you for watching. Please look for more videos on how to set up SQL Server for Snap Center and cloning databases using Snap Center.